What's going on, y'all? Um, RB Diva Season 2 LA, Episode 8. <laughs> I tried to record this. I was like three, four minutes in. I had some good shit. My phone kept going out, so I had to fucking start it over because I didn't want all the interruption or whatever in there. But, no. Um, so far, the season, like I said, <laughs> I'm finna say like I said previously. Well, like I recorded earlier, the drama is kind of lacking, but it's one of those shows that I can really deal with, even if they don't have that much drama in it, even though I would like just a tinge bit of more drama, but I'm liking it for the simple fact that it's showing black women and, and women in general that can just come together and, you know, put their differences aside for a second and actually work with one another and to work on their project and, and show the unison that there is and, and that's why i keep on watching this show but um yeah you know because you know i think the previews was a little bit misleading because they did have it as if you know little mo was gonna be getting into it with somebody or shantae was gonna be getting into it with everybody in the cast and you know little mo and shantae had their little issue for a minute and that was it but you know i'm still liking it and i still continue to support you know all series of r&b diva but you know i know some people probably want more and more drama and i'm like it's not about that this is actually a positive show showing women actually working together and not being ratchet and i mean well there's a little more but you know she's that tolerable ratchetness like you you kind of need that a little bit just a little bit but you know i'm liking it but on this episode we finally get to see everybody doing something, well, just about everybody doing something on their own, individually working on their own career, because in previous episodes, we spent a few episodes about Chrisette Michelle either winning, a, um, going to the Grammys, having a little showcase in the studio with her project. We seen the little thing about maybe an episode and a half about Lil Mo in the studio working on this one song or whatever and trying to perform it. But now we get to see... Claudette working on an album. She's going to, you know, uh, start working on a song. And she was meeting up with Michelle and um, Lil Mo. And they was asking her, how long has it been since you've been out in the industry? And she was like, it's been like 10 plus years since she had a project out. And now she's coming back as a solo artist and not as a group member. She's coming back as a solo artist and, you know, how to deal with that and um, you know, Michelle was like, I can understand what she's talking about because it's like a demand for them, but it's like, how do you find your footing and how will you be accepted now that you're a solo artist, not only a solo artist, but the fact that you've been away for so long and, you know, she got to garner that buzz again. And that's what I I'm glad she's on this show to do that. But, um, with Claudette, she went on ahead and she was in the studio um, going through some songs and, you know, she had a crow there and they was picking out songs and stuff. I mean, it was nice for what it was. The single that she chose, I haven't even heard that automatic single yet. I have to listen to it. I keep saying I'm going to listen to it. I don't know what's be putting me off. I'll be about to listen to it and then something else pop up. But I'm going to listen to it as soon as I finish with this um, review. And I don't know if that was the song that she was doing a video for, but all I got to say is... I don't give a good goddamn what she was singing because all I was, y'all know what I was, look, thank the Lord for double scotch, what is it, double stick tape, because, pssst, Claudette came out there on that video shoot, and all that white pantsuit, with side titty, girl, bless her, that's all I can say is bless her. I was just hoping for a nipple slip. Yes, no, I'm, I went there. Of course I did, and y'all should already fucking know. Claudette is the bay of this series for L.A. Always has since been for the beginning. You know, her hair is everything. Her skin is everything. She's just everything. She's Latin. Come on now. You know, and she's just beautiful to fucking look at. And, you know, she was showing boobs today. And I was just like, wow, they're showing a real lot. I was just like, just if you move one little area something's gonna pop out but you know unfortunately that didn't happen but she was trying to go hard she was trying to go hard on that video shoot i was like okay you know do what you gotta do i mean it's good that you're going back in the game and, and you're putting your fears aside and you're like fuck it i'm gonna go out here and do this shit kudos to you after that um anything else with claudette individually no and then little mo 
I know Claudette, Little Mo, and um, not Claudette, but Lila J, Michelle, um, <laughs> Little Mo, and, and Christette Michelle, they went to a Spanish teacher so they can learn Spanish or at least a little bit, you know, and <laughs> they was asking how to say somebody is cute, somebody is sexy, uh, get the hell away from me and shit like that. I, I appreciate the fact that they try to take the initiative to at least to attempt to learn Spanish since they're about to go over to Puerto Rico, you know, and, and, and try to interact with the culture. I hope they read up on the culture before they go there, too. Also, you know, Claudette, give them some tips, all right? Um, so that was a cute little thing. The episode really wasn't much. The episode really wasn't much, so this is probably going to be a short review. Um, Leela James. Leela James started her scene off. Her first scene, she was meeting with this girl named either Janine or, yeah, I think it was Janine. Either way, she was meeting with her. She is her new hire as her um, tour manager. She had to, you know, get a new one because the old one was dropping the ball. And she was like, fuck this shit. Let me try out something new. And she gets the girl and she's telling her, you know, I never worked with a female before, but... You know how it is when we on the road. I had people come up on stage. I had people try to get back behind stage. I had this. You know, you got to be security. You got to, you know, be the set designer. You got to do all this shit. You got to have all this together. You know, and yada, yada, yada. Now, when she said that shit about people rushing the stage and people trying to get behind, I was like, I'm not even trying to shade Lita James. Maybe it's something I just don't know. But I was just like, Really? <laughs> I was they really be doing that at your shit? Like, girl, I didn't know you was in that much demand. Like, no shade. I'm not trying to be funny. But the thought ran across my mind. It really did. But, I mean, it probably do. You know, motherfuckers crazy as shit. You know, it's a lot of people that just like to go overboard with stuff. So, I mean, I guess. And she's about to do this show in L.A. She's rehearsing. She gets to the rehearsal place. To the place and nothing's together. They barely had, they didn't even go through a full sound check because nothing's together. The microphone is messed up. All the, the ropes and wires and stuff are just cluttered on the floor, on the stage, very visible. The cymbals and stuff are not there. Some of the other instruments are not there. And once again, she don't know where the tour manager is. She was like, she is supposed to have all this stuff done. All right, and no one's heard anything from her. So, you know, she had to practice a cappella with the first couple of songs, and then I guess, you know, the other songs probably didn't require those instruments that she needed in the first one. So, you know, that's what they was gonna do. But at one point or another, she was like, Fuck it, everybody just pack up and they start breaking the shit down. And I said, That's just oh, that is not how you do business. Come on now. You saying you want this position. You saying, you already hearing what this person is saying, like they're doing a test round with you. And you are dropping the ball automatically right out the gate. That goes to show you're not serious about this. And it's just, in this day and age, you do not have the, people are, you know, they need jobs. And you just fucking up. Like, girl, come on now, that's with anything. Don't do that. Take the shit serious. But, um, they didn't even get in contact with her. I don't even think when the show happened. But she comes there. I whoa, wait a minute. Pause. One second. Ninety minutes. Woo. Sons of Anarchy next week. It's the final. Everything is in the final series season. Sons of Anarchy this final season. Boardwalk Empire Boardwalk. Oh. Oh my God. Next Tuesday. That, if y'all don't look at Sons of Anarchy, oh, it's going to have you in your feelings, especially what happened on the last the last episode, at the very last ending of the last episode of last season. I was dead. Gemma has to go. I'm just going to put that out there. Gemma, woo. Okay, we're going to come back to R&B Divas. Let me, let me see. This is what happened. Y'all be like, bitch, what you looking at? Sometimes I be having an episode replaying so I can remember some shit sometimes while I'm doing a review. But that ain't the case. It just turned over there. And I was like, okay, fuck it. All right, let me get back on track. 
What was I talking about? Damn. <laughs> okay, Leela. Leela. You know, so they get to the show. Of course, the girls are there to support her, which I love the fact that they always, regardless of what they're going through, they always come out and support when they can. And that's a good look. And it don't seem nothing fake about it either. They just seem like they're there to support out the genuineness of and the sincerity of their heart because they really want to do that. And she comes out, first of all, she's singing backstage. And y'all know, Leela is just like Miss Chalet. Miss Chalet has a big voice, but a small, small, irritating, squeaky-ass voice when she talks. Regular. But when she's singing, that big, full voice comes out. Leela has a nice speaking voice. But when she's seen that deep-throated shit just comes out, all that deep-throated soul, uh, soul and funk just comes out of her vocal cords. And she was back there singing a cappella, and then she's walking on up to the stage, and she just going off like she's taking their ass to funk church. And I said, y'all better fucking do that. But, um, anyway... Y'all know what... <laughs> Don't, I'm not even going to do it because I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated. It's like these gnats. Like, as soon as you open up the door, they're right there. And they just come on in. And I was just like, oh my God, get the fuck out, okay? You know, just die already. You know, they populate like motherfuckers. It's just irritating me. But anyway, she got up there and she did her shit. You know, I like when she was like, <laughs> everybody get up. All the bougie people sit down, you know. And she sang, and I was like, okay, I get it. I may just check out some of her songs, and let me go on YouTube and check some shit out on her, because I just might buy it. You know, I get paid on Friday. Say, so, hey, I just might spend some money on this hoe. But anyway, after that, the other big story arch of this um, episode was Shantae Moore. Shantae had a hernia disc. In her neck that she had surgery on four years ago. So, all of a sudden she was like, you know, her neck was bothering her and she was in so much pain. She is in rehearsal because she is having this, um, she has to put on this show. And she's there with her, uh, at the church, I think, because her pastor was there. And, you know, she's going through the rehearsal and she's telling her band members, turn, uh, uh, slow the music down. They was like, it's already slow. No, it slowed the music down. And it was like, she just said she is in so much pain that it feels like everything is moving so fast around her. So when she was like, let me just take a minute and sit down. She sat down and you could just see all that pain on her face. And I was like, you good? Because Ashley would, oh, I would have been at home crying like a motherfucker. I'm like, fast my mom up. Y'all know when you get sick, you want your mom and everything. That would have been me. I'm, I'm one of those people. But, um. She was just sitting there in pain and she was crying or whatever. And, you know, her back was hurting. And she said it was like a pinch nerve. And she just was hoping that she did not need surgery again because she did not want to have to, you know, take time off with the fucked up stuff. You know, she got to record and, 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 and do this Puerto Rico thing. And she got other shows. And she's like a single mother. She's a sole provider for a child at the moment. I don't know. Stuff like that. I get it. But sometimes your health comes first. And, you know, she's thinking, like, if I take this time off to get this shit done, I'm losing out on stuff to, you know, help provide for my family. So, I get it. It's like a lose-lose, catch-22 situation. But her manager, she knew how she was. And she was like, I see it in your face. Something is not right. I'm going to call the paramedics. The pastor come out trying to sit with her. She's just crying. And I hate, I don't care how much of a bitch you are. I can't stand seeing somebody in pain. Any type of pain, that shit just, uh, it, it gets to me. You know, I feel sorry for you for that second, but it, depending on if I like you or not, as soon as you, it's over with, I'm going to go back to, okay, whatever the fuck. But, um, you know, in that moment, you know, they take her to the hospital. She has a doctor appointment, and they do x-rays of her neck, and basically showing that two vertebrae in her neck is basically pressing against her spine. And she needs to get surgery to eliminate that. And either she don't get surgery and she's going to stay in pain and risk the fact of um, losing the function of her arms. 
or you know they're gonna give her an epidural shot in her neck which is like a cortisone shot you know to eliminate some of the inflammation and you know help her function for like a, it, it he was like it can you know eliminate the pain a little bit make it comfortable for like a day a month six months whichever and she was like you know she just can't do the surgery at that moment so she took the shot to girl it's time for them to do the show Shantae is lit. Everybody is concerned as to, you know, how is she going to perform? Should she be out there performing? But Shantae is like, these people came to see me. I can't disappoint them. So let me take my drugged up ass out on this stage and do what I got to do. And bitch, let me tell you something. There is nothing like hospital drugs. And Shantae felt the full effect of it. Dead in her motherfucking neck. If a pregnant woman, look, I seen how my mama acted when she got an epidural when she was trying to give birth. Bitch was loopy as fuck, okay? Didn't know what the fuck was going on around her. Shantae didn't know what the hell was going on on that stage. Shantae was out. Shantae was there, but she wasn't there. Her body was there, but Shantae was nowhere to be found, okay? There was somebody else in that body. And um, she, she was just talking to the crowd, and you could just tell... It was kind of, it was almost embarrassing for her. But then, you know, she get up there, she's singing the songs, and she pulling this dude up on stage, and, you know, she's being flirty with the dude and all this stuff. And and, and she's singing a song, and she's just being, it was like a little bit too sexual. <laughs> she was trying to give you Janet Jackson, Would You Mind? Um, Y'all remember seeing that on the uh, All For You tour when she strapped dude down, and she was... Uh, that's what she was trying to do, because as soon as she finished, as soon as she finished, she told him, if you open up your body a little bit more, you can receive more. If No, she said, if you opened up your body, you could have received more. I said, damn, what are you trying to do? <laughs> he already on rock probably because of all that shit, bitch. What you trying to do, make him bust? But, okay, you know, so the girls were finna throw Shantae a birthday party, because her birthday party was, her birthday was coming up. They at Claudette's house. And Shantae comes over with the pastor and her husband, her manager and his her husband, and with Roy. Shantae must have got an extra dose of a um, you know, some epidural, cortisone, or whatever the fuck, another shot in her neck or whatever. Because Shantae mixed with them drugs and she probably was drinking before she got there. You can't tell me no different, bitch. Shantae was not Shantae. Shantae was loose. She was funny. She was just all over the place. You know, she was just having a good time, kicking her heels up. You know, they was like, who is this dude? This is Roy. And then, you know, she all up on Roy. They eating each other uh, donuts and stuff. And, and and she saying, hey, Roy. I was like, Roy gonna get some dome tonight. And that's probably why your motherfucking neck fucked up, okay? Mm, lock jaw, and then you go, let me start playing with Shantae. But, um, it was good seeing her not so uptight, though, this episode, even though, you know, it was because she was in pain and she had to take some medication. But I guess some drama going to happen next week. Um, that's all I really want to say. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And once again, I apologize for the interruption. Phone and fucking gnats and shit. Mm. I'll see you later.